It's often very difficult to break free of religious beliefs. Just ask anyone who's ever left them behind. But why is it so hard? For many, it's because of the way that these beliefs were shaped within them. According to philosopher Stephen Law, there are five important belief-shaping mechanisms that can play a major role in producing and sustaining an intellectual black hole. Isolation, control, uncertainty, repetition, and emotion. Look, I get it. If you're a believer watching this, you aren't going to like me insinuating that the way you hold your beliefs might be equivalent to an intellectual black hole. But bear with me. I don't personally think that all religion is inherently harmful, though I do think that communities that abuse these strategies should be shown for what they are. Deity-approved brainwashing centers. So, potential religious person watching this, is your uncertainty being preyed upon? As Law explains, uncertainty is a potent source of stress, so the more you associate alternative beliefs with uncertainty, the better. Ideally, offer a simple set of geometric, easily formulated and remembered certainties designed to give meaning to and cover every aspect of life. By constantly harping on the vagaries, uncertainties, and meaninglessness of life outside of your belief system, the simple, concrete certainties you offer may begin to seem increasingly attractive to your audience. Were you isolated? Were you sent to what Law calls hermetically sealed off religious schools growing up, or something equivalent? Related to this, is your religious group controlling or insecure about what kind of information you might take in? This is sometimes made explicit, but all too often it's insidiously implicit. There might be a subtle expectation for you to self-govern, so as not to read, listen to, or watch the wrong kinds of things, and for you to filter all opposing viewpoints through the lens of the apologists and leaders of your own group. No need to do any serious investigation for yourself. Are members of your group encouraged to engage in repetition, even into adulthood? That's a little weird, isn't it? Here's Law again. Get people to recite what you want them to believe over and over again in a mantra-like way. Make the beliefs trip unthinkingly off their tongues. It doesn't matter whether your subjects accept what they are saying, or even if they fully understand it to begin with. There's still a fair chance that belief will eventually take hold. Finally, is your group leveraging your emotions to keep you in? Law concludes, Make people emotionally dependent on your belief system. Ensure that what self-esteem and sense of meaning, purpose, and belonging they have is derived as far as possible from their belonging to your system of belief. Make sure they recognize that abandoning those beliefs will involve the loss of things about which they care deeply. To be fair, these strategies aren't unique to religion, as they tend to be popular with political groups bent on maintaining power as well. But that's taking us too far afield from what I want to discuss here. Now that I've summarized Professor Law's points, I want to make some of my own. One of the most obvious red flags to me about how people maintain religious beliefs are the ways in which they approach their own experiences. They seem to get trapped in a never-ending circle. It seems to me like my deity answers my prayers every once in a while. Yay! I'm allowed to feel more secure in my personal beliefs. Does it start to seem like my deity's apparent activity looks indistinguishable from non-existence and chance? Ah, uh, I shouldn't worry about that. It shouldn't even in principle cause me to question. It seems to me like my deity changes people's lives and that my larger community is special. Well, obviously, because my religion is the right one. Does it start to seem like everything I've witnessed in my community and in my own life can be explained naturalistically, with no appeal to deities required? Maybe I just don't have the eyes to see, or maybe there's something wrong with me. To be frank, this is how gullible people think. Any experiences in line with what you want to be true counts as evidence in favor of it. And any that even suggest an alternative way of looking at things don't count as contrary evidence at all. Yeah, nothing to see here. 